it's time for the crafty chat podcast which is a knitting and crochet and a bit of beading um podcast hosted here in the corner of craft uh which is currently located in frankfurt germany although i am british um i am currently living in frankfurt germany and it's quite a bright sunny morning this morning and yes I am filming it before midday, which means the cathedral bells shouldn't go berserk, in theory. Because I live right near the cathedral in Frankfurt. Anyway, hi. Um, my name is Hannah, as I think I've already said. And um, welcome to the Crafty Chat podcast. Thank you all of you who have come back and keep watching. It truly means a lot to me that so many people have subscribed and enjoy the videos. And also, if you are new to the Crafty Chat podcast, hi, welcome. I hope that you enjoy it enough. If you enjoy it a lot, feel free to hit that subscribe button, which is just below this video, I think, or to the side, depending what device you're watching it on. And um, then you, if you hit the little notification bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. So you get there's a new podcast every fortnight, and then on a th uh, on then on a Thursday, no, there's a new podcast every fortnight on a Thursday, and then on a Sunday, um, I do a craft tutorial. Usually, this is my crafty mug that my friend Julia painted for me because she is incredible. Crafty mug. If you would like to follow me on any social media, these are my social media information, here is my social media information, and all of the links to my social media stats are, can be found in the description box of this video, as well as the link to the Ravelry group. We have a, we have a crafty chat Ravelry group, um, which is quite exciting. Um, in there, you will get, you will see all the notes and all the information on all of the things that I discuss here, podcasters I mention, knit-alongs I'm doing, knit-alongs I'm hosting, more on that in a second, yarns I've acquired, projects I'm knitting, anything that you would probably have a question for can be found in the Ravelry group. And if not, well then feel free to ask me and I will answer you and get back to you on that. And ooh, I'm wearing one of my new dresses. So um, Lindy Bop, which is a like a vintage reproduction website. Um, they had a sale and I decided to treat myself and how am I going to show you what fabric this is without thrusting my chest into the camera. I'm just going to move the camera one second. It's cats under umbrellas and it's raining and it's really cute. So first of all I want to announce that the Corner of Craft aka the Crafty Chat podcast is going to be hosting their very first, okay, I'm hosting my first knit along and I'm really excited about it. I said when I hit 35,000 subscribers, which I have, and thank you very much, I wanted to host a knit along and I didn't know what to host it, what kind of knit along to host. So I was talking to my friend and neighbor, Becky, and we decided let's knit along together because that seems like the logical thing to do because I'm only going to be her neighbor for a couple more months because I'm going to be moving back to the UK, which is incredibly sad. Um, but now is as good a time as any. So, Becky and I filmed a little video yesterday, so I'm just going to insert that here. I say little video, it, it, it took a while for us to get going. I don't know how you podcasters that film with more than one person, I don't know how you do it. I'm so used to filming videos by myself, it was weird to have someone next to me as well, I don't know. It was just, it was weird, but in the most delightful way. Um, so yes, over to you, Hannah and Becky. Hi! Hi! This is Becky. Hey, I'm in the corner of craft. Ooh. Um, this is the infamous Becky that I've talked about in every single podcast that I've done thus far. I exist. You're a tradition. Welcome. Oh, thank you. That's okay. Good to be here. Becky is here because we are going to announce our knit along, which Yay! is super exciting. So this is my first knit along. Becky has hosted many knit alongs. So we thought, let's do a neighborly knit along. Neighborly knits. Oh, well, that could be the hashtag. Oh. We're going to be doing a Stephen West knit along! Yay! Uh, Hence the, the Stephen West stuff. These, these are both Becky's creations. This is this, the what? Th this is the batad. It's a thingy. It's not a shawl. It's not a garment. It's a thingy. It's kind of like a poncho. Yes. With and one I'm, sleeve. I'm wearing the doodler, which is one of his mystery knit alongs from like last. No. 2015. Two years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. I need to stop leaning forward because it makes my head look really big. If 
I sit here like this. So I'm just going to sit back. I think my chair's a bit just further than yours anyway. Anyway. So we haven't uh, planned this a great deal. No. Um, it's going to start the 1st of May and go to the 1st of July. Yes. And we realize that is very soon. However, this knit along is a little bit cash, um, meaning whips are totally allowed. Yes. As long as you're not like really close to being done with it. Let's just don't take the use piss, the honor basically. system on yeah. that. I don't know what that means. Don't take the Mickey. You're so British. Don't take the piss. Why would you take the piss? That's disgusting. That's an expression. Okay. Don't don't be an asshole. Do we have to bleep that? No, it's fine. Don't be an asshole. Just, you know, like, it's just in the spirit of good fun because I know I have been in a knitting slump. And if there's one thing to get you out of a slump, it's Stephen West. The whole point is to have fun with color and design and just to have a good time. Yes. If you have never knit with one of his patterns before, you may not know that they are super duper fun to knit. Always interesting construction, very well written. And if you have, then you know that already and you probably want to knit more. So here's your excuse. I'm really excited because I've never knit one of his patterns. I'm going to be knitting ready. the exploration station. And I am going to be knitting the speckled fade dotted rays. Yes. That's a complicated title. It is. Anyway, so. May the 1st of July, the 1st, whips are allowed. Use your consent, gen, general consensus, is that the word I want? I don't know general, what phrase I want. Like, common sense? Yep, maybe. Um, <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, oh! Oh! You get, we're going to do like a special prize. For, okay, so like the general thing is just going to be randomly selected from the, from the thread, which we're going to have in one of our groups. Yeah. But then I think it's a shame when people, you know, go to extra effort with things that they don't get like, you know, their own special prize. So we are going to randomly select. But we did, we thought that the person that takes the most Stephen West-like photo of the finished article will get a special prize. Yes. And if you don't know what we're talking about, you haven't lived. So definitely go on Ravelry, search for his patterns, and just look at like the crazy photo shoots he does for them. It's amazing. Yes. Also, check out his YouTube channel. We jokingly discussed about making our own Stephen West music video, but ain't nobody got time for that. No. Had we planned this a couple of days ago, <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps it would have happened, but unfortunately, we're a little disorganized. Yes. Maybe if we get a lot of participation, we will be yeah, we'll toward be. the end or something. But yeah, have fun with a photo shoot if you want. It is not a requirement, but you will be eligible for like a podcaster's choice. Or a prize. video. Or a video. That would be so cool. Yes. That would be awesome. But we're thinking of calling it, are we, we need to do that, the yeah. hashtag. Yeah, the hashtag is going to be the get knit and kitten cow. Keep knit and kitten. Keep. Keep, Keep knitting, kitten. knitting kitten because this is something that he says in some of his videos and his Instagram and things like that. So we decided it'll be the Keep Knitting Kitten Cal. So if you it's are having the screen, yes, we will not be uh, shortening that because just think about it. Yeah, the the, the three letter they abbreviation. Would, no, we will not be abbreviated. No. So for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, so you're gonna yeah. type it out. This, yeah. Uh, go big or go home. It's really exciting! Yay! Also, not that we're begging for prizes, but if you do happen to have any prizes that you'd like to contribute, feel free to message either myself or Becky, and we will be give you our address so you can either send us the prize or we can have it as like a, oh yeah, we'll get the winner to contact you. Totally. Example. And we will probably also be putting some stuff together ourselves that are just fun things, but Prizes are welcome if you would like to prize. Surprise! Surprise us. <laughs> that was pretty organized. That was really good. Was it? I feel really awkward. I feel like it was like too good. I feel like we've forgotten something. But yeah, I think that's everything. I think so. Cool. So just grab some needles and balls. It's a free for all. To, cro to quote Stephen West, because baby you're a knitter, not a something or a quitter. Be strong. Test on, join our knit along. Put that in there somewhere. Uh, on that note. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So yeah, that's right.
really exciting. Hashtag keep knitting kitten. Cal. Um, uh, something we forgot to say is that you can double dip. So I know there are other people that are also having Stephen West themed knit alongs, themed knit alongs. For example, Claire of the Beautiful Things podcast. She is hosting the Exploration Station Cal. And so that is what I'm hoping to going to hopefully be participating in. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so feel free to double dip. Like Becky said, it's a really kind of informal knit along. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm actually hosting it till the 1st of July. We're hosting it till the 1st of July. And then I'm going to Estonia for a week from the 1st of July to the 7th of July. So that's not a week, is it? But I'm going for six days. Um, and then I'm moving back to England like the week after. So it's probably a bad time to end the knit along, but worst comes to worst. We'll all be, it'll all be fine. It'll all be fine. Everything will be fine. So yeah, if anyone would like to donate any prizes, feel free to message me on either Instagram or Ravelry or my email address is also in the description box below. So feel free to message me if you'd like to donate any prizes. Not that we're begging for prizes, but if, you know, we're going to put some things in ourselves. but if people would like to bulk it out a bit, feel free. I'm gonna stop looking at myself because I'm just getting distracted by the glare on my glasses, but that's okay. My tea's too hot because I've just made it. It's very stressful. So let's get on with the knitting, the knitting. You've been watching this for like a quarter of an hour and I haven't even talked about knitting yet. Anyway, so um, I don't have any finished things this week. I think this is my first podcast. Let me quickly go back through my podcast book. Yeah, this is my first podcast without any finished things. Episode 12. So my parents came to visit last week and I will talk more about that in life update stuff. My parents came to visit last week which meant I didn't have an awful lot of knitting time and any spare time I had was spent beading for another Etsy update which I will also talk about later. Um, but I do have some whips and hose, um, hose being half objects which is exciting. So let me start with my first hoe. I finished my first springtime lacy sock. So these are the Mercury Sock, pattern by Kim Drota. Um, I use 2.5 millimeter needles instead of 2.25. And it's this fun lace pattern. I've never done lace before, so I thought, let's give it a go. And the yarn I'm using is this slightly falling apart skein of yarn. And it is Unikitty by Truly Hooked. It was her anti-Valentine's Day colourway. And these are meant to be done for Easter. They're meant to be my Easter socks, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, Unikitty standard socks, 75% Supersh Merino, 25% nylon. Standard sock yarn. It's all of these beautiful pastel colours. This is what it knits up like. That's what, what it knit up like for me. If you don't use the pattern. And I have cast on my second sock. Um, I haven't got much of it knit. I don't know why, I just haven't. It's the thing that I take with me on the go because it's in a nice small bag. Um, I'm gonna sneeze again. I'm not. So it's in a nice small bag. Um, and this bag was by my good friend. Well, I'm calling her my good friend. I gushed about her a lot on the last podcast, maybe the one before, I can't remember, on a previous podcast. Bernadette, aka Eco Geek, and um, half of the uh, wet, co wet, blah, blah, wet Coast Walls podcast. Exploding TARDIS. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, and I've just got a beaded rubber ducky. These are not yet available in my shop because I haven't made any more of them yet. Come on, focus. Do your thing. Yeah, I just thought it colour coordinated so well that he needed to go on. And he's just marking the end of my row because I sew in my ends as I go. Sorry. I'm that annoying person. So yeah, really easy pattern if you've never done lace before. Um, I've got it I've got it memorized now. The only annoying thing is that when I cast on my second sock, it's a free pattern so I can, I don't mind saying this. I was doing a three by one rib when it's meant to be a two by one rib and I knit the whole of the rib and then realized that I'd done it all wrong so I had to rip it all out so that's annoying. But whatever. So 
that's my first half object and I'm hoping to have that finished by next time I podcast, fingers crossed, I'll have a few things finished. And then in my Edinburgh Yarn Festival bag, ah, oh, I get it, I just went by and it's a, it's a ram. So you haven't seen me cast this on, but it is another half object. And you might think, Hannah, why are you making these at this time of year? Well, Suzanne of Green, Lank Green at Lampkin Yarns has designed a new pattern and asked for test knitters a while ago. And I said, I'll test knit. And then I haven't test knit. And so I've actually started. And it's, it's not because she said, but she said there's no rush. So it took the pressure off a little bit. But... These are the squirrel mitts, and I have asked if I can talk about them, and she said it's fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these are, the pattern's gonna be called the squirrel mitts. I had to adjust it slightly, Suzanne. I hope that's okay, because uh, I have short hands. So there's meant to be five more rows of ribbing at the top of the top cuff. But as you can see, if I did any more rows of ribbing, I may as well have just knitted a full mitten. Um, and the purpose of it, of the long rib, is so you can fold it back if you want to, um, which I think is really cool. But yeah, I stopped there when my little finger disappeared. <laughs> I'm really short hands. I'm really small hands. I'm five foot seven, which is quite tall. I have averagely sized feet, but I just have really small hands. Um, I did for the first time Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which is shocker surprisingly stretchy um and that's exciting it's made from double knit yarn i knit i could have knit this in a day but i had to stop myself because i had to do some stuff for my etsy shop uh which i'll stop talking about i'm sorry i haven't cast on the next one yet where's the ball band here we go i just bought some commercial yarn for this um i bought some rico design essentials merino plus dk extra fine super wash um and it's 50 percent where's it say 50 percent acrylic 50 percent virgin wool made in italy apparently this is the ball band the color is color 10 zero, 010 zero. and oop, it comes in a little ball like this and obviously i've used some of it and it's this just gorgeous teal green color that i thought would go with my baseline shawl really nicely so it's like matching but not matching matching um but yes i'm test knitting so i followed the pattern exactly um except for the top cuff because i have really short fingers and just small hands in general my first time cabling i forgot to mention that bit um do -do -do. i think i did quite a good job i didn't make a mistake And like, it's not a difficult cable pattern, which is probably why I didn't make a mistake. I'd say it's perfect for beginners. And I will keep you posted when that pattern gets posted. Um, because I think they'd make really good Easter presents, uh, Christmas presents. Sorry, Easter socks, Christmas presents. I think they make really good Christmas presents because you knit them up really quickly. And I have a feeling I'm going to be making a few pairs this year. The final thing I'm working on which is in my fringe field supply bag, which I have pinned up. Do, 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 do. And I got a new pin. Becky gave me a pin. It says equality. Because I drink a lot of tea. I love it. Thanks, Becky. So this is my blue hour sweater. And I haven't got as much of this done as I would have liked. Because like I said, I've been a busy bee. Um, and this is without having a full-time job. Although I suppose entertaining my parents is a full-time job. So the sheep is where I was last time. And so I've knit a little bit. I successfully faded into the... Oh, this is the Blue Hour Sweater by Suvi Simola. Simola. I don't know how you pronounce your name, Suvi, I'm sorry. Um, it's made with Knitting Goddess Yarns. The purple is in the colour violet. The grey is in the colour silver, except for what I'm knitting now because I accidentally bought a ball of the wrong colour at Edinburgh Yarn Festival because the lighting was bad. So the bottom is charcoal, but I feel like I've successfully faded it in. But I've started on the ribbing at the bottom. 
which is exciting. This is my first ever jumper and I'm a little bit stressed to get onto the sleeves, which is also why I think that I'm not knitting it obsessively. But yeah, I like it. I'm excited to get wearing it. I think it will fit. I hope it will fit. Um, I have tried it. It fits so far. But I have also put on a bit of weight since I started knitting this because weddings have happened and parents visiting have happened. And my goodness, I ate the best schnitzel I've ever eaten whilst in Cologne. It was incredible. Anyway, um, yes. I knitted the size medium. Um, I pretty much got gauge. Um, I'm knitting it a bit looser than I think I normally knit. So I hit gauge, but it does mean my stitches are a little uneven, but that's okay. Um, I went down a needle size, to, as it says, to knit the rib. I don't know if that was a good idea or not, because I'm not like traditionally womanly shaped. Hmm, that's a problematic sentence. I take that sentence back. Basically, um, I carry my weight around the middle as opposed to my hips. There we go. So, um, whereas a lot of people tend to go in, in the tummy region, I go out in the tummy region. So I potentially shouldn't have gone down a needle size, but you know, now I know how to do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. I can make my bind off surprisingly stretchy. I'm such a loser. Um, but yeah, it's going well. I've done all my increases and I'm just knit, knit, knit in the rib. And maybe I'll knit this a bit this afternoon, maybe. I should really knit my other mitten because then it will be done and then I can send the pattern back and whatnot. But I love this yarn so much. It is, um, I've talked about it a lot in other ones, but it's a non superwash yarn. So it feels really sheepy and smells a little sheepy, which my dad laughed at when I said, and I said, smell that. I gave him the book, we gave him my jumper and said, smell it. And he said, okay, I see what you mean. It smells a bit like a sheep. But it does mean, it is not, as I said, it's non superwash. So it's going to be so warm and I'm really excited. Um, to wear it in autumn and winter back in England this year. <laughs> I'm so sad to be leaving now. Uh, if you watched my old crafty chats, which weren't podcasts, um, they were just me sitting down once a month and chatting, um, you would know that I would, if I was watching this now, I'd be really surprised because there was no way I was saying I was sad to be leaving last year. But now, I've made friends and I've settled in and I have to leave. But yeah, jumper! Really exciting. And the other thing that I've been working on is my cosy memories blanket, but I'm not going to show it to you because I think I've only added two squares. Like I said, I haven't had a lot of knitting time and I know it's an excuse, but I will talk about that more later. So I have sped through my whips and hose because um, I don't have many of them. And I know how I said in my last podcast that I have too many whips and then this week I cast on my mittens. <sighs> that was not clever of me. So now we are moving into fanning up my stash and I'm going to see if my tea is drinking temperature. Mm -mm -mm. It almost is. Okay, so speaking of Green Lankin, who is the designer of the squirrel mitts that I showed you, she sent a package to Becky because Becky was having a knit along, is having a knit along whereby you can enter if you use British, no, European yarns, yarns by European indie dyers. Um, it ends on May the 1st, so quickly get in there. It's the Euro Stash Cow. Um, anyway, one of the prizes is a skein of, I think it's Mrs. Weasley. I can't remember which yarn it is. I'm sorry, Suzanne. But Suzanne sent us her a skein of yarn. Um, but also in the package to Becky, she sent me a, a, a Easter, an Easter present. So I got some minis. I haven't weighed them. I think they're 10 gram minis. They look to be 10 grams, but they might be 20 grams. But yeah, I got some minis to add either to my blanket or to use in some kind of mini project because I think they're such fun colors. This green is delightful. This is hair goals. Um, this is fab. This is wonderful. And my goodness. And then she also sent a wee knitted bunny, which is super cute. But just the focus. So yeah, he he was hanging out on picture frames behind me, but you you may not you can't notice at all. 
but it's looking a little bearer behind me because we sent some stuff uh, back to England with my parents. But yeah, Bunny. So he's just chilling. He's just chilling with my Tum Tums behind me, my, my Disney crew. Because I'm a child and I still need soft toys. I'm all right with it. And then I forgot to show this in my last podcast because I didn't buy it and it didn't get sent, but well, it did. Okay, so Amy Meeks of the Periscoping Sisters podcast sent Becky and I a package of yarn. And Becky and I had to fight over what yarn we wanted and we both wanted this particular skein. Becky won the coin toss. Um, and then Becky was really lovely and as a thank you for feeding my cats, gave me said skein of yarn. So this is by Yarn Cafe Creations and it is my boyfriend's blue jeans. And it is the most stunning skein of yarn I have seen in a long time. Beautiful. And it is Young Cafe Creation. And it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It is um, four ply yarn, sock weight yarn, fingering weight yarn, whatever you call it. I call it four ply, I'm English. And yeah. I'm really happy to have it. I feel a bit bad, but I don't because it was a present, you know? But I love it. I love it. And next up, my parents came to visit, and, Ge and Germany has a lot of sock yarn, um, like the Regio sock yarn, and Opal, and goodness knows what else. And so my mum kindly bought me a ball of yarn. It's the Regia design line Anne and Carlos, colour 03765, which is the island colour, um, which I now am realising that Becky has a pair of socks out of this colour. Um, but yeah, so I'm hopefully going to get two pairs of socks out of this. Uh, it's a 100 gram ball, so I'm hopefully going to be able to get two pairs of socks out of this with contrasting heels, toes and cuffs. A purple would be beautiful. So yeah, that is exciting. And then the final, final stash fattening. This is different because it was purchased back in February and then it arrived at my parents' house just after I left a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it is of this beauty. Now if you recognize the packaging at all, you'll know that it is by Kate Celine. And I've been a huge, fan of her yarns but I've never bought them because it was before I was into indie dyed yarn and I was cheap and just bought acrylic um, and this is her February colourway 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 100 grams, 4 ply, fingering weight, blah 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 incredible now you may be thinking this took a while to arrive um, it does clearly state on the uh, listing page that it can take up to six weeks for them to get shipped because they're dyed to demand. And she is, you know, one woman show, trying to look after her family and dye yarn as well. And she's a popular lady. Um, so these things happen, but my goodness, is it worth it? Yes, so soft, so soft. I like a different kind of soft to this. This is like a whole different realm of softness and it's so plump as you can see. So plump. I always find it laugh when people, I always find it laugh. I always find it funny when people describe yarn as plump. But you know, this and this, I mean this is wound looser but still. But this is beautiful. And this has thrown a huge spanner in the works regarding my exploration station. Uh, oh, and also with with orders she sends stitch markers so I've got three cute little cute three cute little stitch markers which are not gonna focus yeah Ta -da! and her business card is awesome and there is all of her info if you're interested anyway uh, so you I have a bag with my name on 
my best friend gave to me uh, when I was bridesmaid at her wedding. I need your help. I'm going to be casting on the exploration station, as I said, for um, our get knit and kitten cow. Keep knitting kitten cow. My goodness. So I'm going to be casting on an exploration station for the keep knit and kitten cow, and I need some help regarding colors. Now there are two yarns that are definitely going in. Let me just open one. So two yarns that are definitely going in it without question. This is Vulan Fine Yarns on her Volca vase. This is the last unicorn. This was a present from Kristen and it is um, 801010 Suposh Merino Cashmere and Nylon. And it's the softest thing ever and it's beautiful and it's mint green and it's got purple in it and I love it. Thank you, Kristen. And then with this, I also got this in Edinburgh, and this is also definitely going in. This is La Bien Aimée. Uh, this is 80% Suposh Merino, 20% Nylon High Twist. The colour is the Magellanic Cloud. So they're definitely going in. No question. This is great with purples and teals. Then I got this colour in my Notorious Yarn Swap and it's by Spud and Chloe and it's um, fine sock, 80% wool, 20% silk. It's only 50 grams. I think it should be enough. And it's in the colour 7807. And it is this, I'm going to move my tea in case I drop my yarn. It is this beautiful baby dusky pink colour. Yeah, that's pretty true to colour. So that's an, op that's an option if I put it this way up. Yeah, it's a bit tidier. So that's an option. And then we have, I need four colours. So then we have this, which is left over from my blue hour sweater. And I have loads of it left. So I have that option, which goes beautifully with the pinky purples in here and the pinky purples in here and goes with that. Or my mum likes this. I think she likes this option. I can't remember. So you've got a bit of the mint in here. You've got the pink in here. You've got a nice blue in here so you've got that or we can drop the pink pick up the violet but I don't think I don't think that's really the jam because the the original lineup was this and I think I love it still but then spanner. Let me know. Do you prefer the purpley purple? Or do you prefer the bluey purple? Or do you not? Or do just just let me know what you think because I need your help. I said I wasn't going to cast my exploration station on until I'd got onto the sleeves of my blue hour sweater so I better get a wriggle on if I need to be ready for May the 1st. Then I have a full month to knit it before um, Claire from the Beautiful Things podcast, her knit along ends. So yeah, this one and this one, maybe this one, maybe this one, or maybe this one. Because I mean this is beautiful I don't know if you can see. It's a beautiful baby pink in it, which I think will go really nicely with this. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna put this back away in its in its bag. I'm so cool. How many other people have bags with their names on? I really want to come out with the corner of craft project bags. I think it'll be cool because I love my logo. Like I don't mean to. I was going to say toot my own horn, blow my own horn. But I love my logo. It was designed by one of my friends, Lynn. And sorry for the. My logo was designed by one of my friends, Lynn, and it was lino cut and printed. And let me grab the original print because I have it. So this is the original print. 
She worked on a couple of things, and I said, is there any chance you can stick a ball of yarn in a teapot? And she said, yeah, of course. So, I love it. I absolutely love my logo. Like, she's so clever. Mm-mm-mm. Tea. So, I'm just looking in the Ravelry group. Got a question? Just ask. I have a, um... I have a thread in the Ravelry group which is basically ask whatever you want and I can answer it and I realised that I've done a really bad job of answering. So I've got several, I've answered them, um, I've answered them on the thread but I haven't answered them in person but I thought I'd answer them in person in case you're wondering a similar thing. Uh, how did you come to live in Germany and will you miss it when you move back to England? So. I moved to Germany because my boyfriend wanted to teach abroad and he was originally talking about Japan and I thought Japan would be a huge culture shock for me. I'm very much a home bird. It's not a problem, it's just a small problem I suppose. I'm very much a home bird but um, I can speak German because I studied it at university and at school. So I said, tell you what, Germany is a really lovely place. It's not that that much different from England um, and hopefully I'll be able to find a job easier. As those of you who know, it has not made finding a job easier. Um, but that's okay. That is fine. I um, was not in the best mental place last year. Because I've been here for almost two years now. I wasn't in the best mental place when I first moved here. Um, we sadly lost a very close family member a couple of months after I moved here. Completely out of the blue. Very sudden. No warning whatsoever. Um, just found out a week before how ill he was, that he was ill full stop, and then a week later he didn't exist anymore. So um, that was more difficult on me than I thought it was. I thought I dealt with it a lot better than I actually had, and then looking back on it this year, I was just miserable for most of last year which is really sad and I didn't allow myself to settle down and get comfortable and I just changed a lot. But anyway, that is I think one reason why I struggled to find a job, just because my brain wasn't there. It wasn't in it. it I didn't want to be here so why would I want to settle down? Um, but this year I've real come into my own, I'm a lot happier, I've made friends, I've settled down and now I'm going to leave. Yes, I'm going to miss Germany a lot. I'm not only going to miss the food, but I'm going to miss the lifestyle. I'm going to miss how well behaved the children are. I'm going to miss uh, how safe I feel. Although I feel safe in Nottingham as well, so I can't really say anything. How just lovely people are. And uh, yeah, I'm going to miss all the fests. Germans have fest for everything. They're, if in doubt, there's a fest. And it's an excuse to gather and drink wine, and it's incredible. But yes. Somebody asked if there are show notes for the crafty chats before I labelled them by episode number. No, there are not. I did a few crafty chats, um, but they were not a structured podcast. It was me sitting down. It was like a monthly... Ah, oh, there's a great tip outside. How lovely. Um, it was a monthly catch-up, if you will, on what has been going on in my life. Um, I would sit and I would knit and I would drink tea and I would ask you how your week, how your month went, I would fill you in on how my month went, how I was feeling, what was happening and what not. Um, that was back when I did three videos a week, three videos a week, I don't know how I did it. Uh, so there are no show, not show notes for those because I didn't really talk about anything in particular. And then somebody said, will you be, oh, Will you be continuing the podcast after you return back to England? Hopefully. I really hope so. Um, we're going to be in a slightly different financial situation to the one that we're currently in because Mary is going to change careers, which means going back to college and doing a bit of training and whatnot. Um, so he's not going to be teaching anymore. He doesn't think. He's just going to take the time to see if he wants to teach. Because um, if he doesn't want to teach in this country, my goodness, he is not going to want to teach in England it is not good um but yes hopefully hopefully i will continue to do this podcast it might have a different structure it might be less frequent there's somebody walking past my window looking at me as i talk to a camera it's a little bit strange i'm just going to keep talking and pretending that everything is okay 
Okay, good, they've gone. Yes, I fully intend to keep filming YouTube videos and doing podcasts. Eww. Eww. When I move back to England, I might have to reassess my channel. I might not have time to do a weekly tutorial, which is really sad. Um, you'll notice that I haven't had many tutorials up lately, but that is because I've been busy. Uh, and if I have struggled to put tutorials up when I don't have a job, what am I going to be like when I do have a job? And I know I did it before, but um, we're just going to have to, we're going to have to play it by ear. I might still be able to do it, but we'll see. Next, I'm going to talk to you about my Etsy shop, because I have an Etsy shop. Um, I have an update coming tomorrow, uh, which is exciting. Um, you seem to like my beaded stitch markers, or progress keepers, I suppose I should call them, quite a lot. Um, I did an update of 35 items, uh, even with my parents here, which meant getting up. I got up at 7 a.m. I was beading by half past seven for two hours before I met my parents every morning while they were here. <laughs> oh, the things I do. But now they've gone, I'm kind of struggling to get up that early again, but this morning I'm doing quite well. So I'm having an Etsy update tomorrow. I don't know what time yet. Um, I don't tend to announce the time just because I don't. So I already have some things in my shop. I've still got some dragons left. So here is one of the dragons. I suppose I could hold two up at once. So yeah, I have a couple of dragons left. And they're super cute and they're so small and they're made from glass seed beads that are individually sewn together one by one and they're super lightweight so they're not going to snag your knitting or pull on your knitting at all. Um, I've got some smaller ones that are a slightly cheaper price point. Not saying these are expensive. I charge for, I charge fairly. I think I charge fairly anyway. Like so, super cute. The needs are each five pounds. The dragons are 10 pounds. I still have a couple of these unicorns. These aren't as popular as the other ones. That's okay. They're bluish green mane and then a pale blue body and it's super cute. I really like it. And then I have some new charms in the shop. Um, these were in last week. I got some sheepies. And they're quite new. I've got three of these going in. I have a couple of snails. If you follow me on Instagram the past couple of days, you would have seen these. Ooh, just trying to line them up on my hand. And they're really cute. I really like these. Do, 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 do. So you have purple snails and we have blue snails. Snails. Um, snails. Then we have some coffee cups. Now these coffee cups were inspired by a coffee cup that uh, Becky was given at Edinburgh Young Festival by one of her friends, Patricia, who is P4chan and the host of the Knitography vlog um, in Norway. But yeah, that's what the design is inspired by. And, I, and it looks a bit like colour work, so I ran with it and did what I could. But it, it could be coffee, it could be hot chocolate. You, you, you make it what you want to make it, depending on your beverage of choice. Then we have some Game Boys. I got three of these. Game Boy Colour, for those of you who played a Game Boy Colour back in the day. I very much did. And then we got some police boxes. Because, I mean, I am a fan of Doctor Who and I'm not going to call them a TARDIS because copyright, um, but police boxes. So each of those charms that I've just shown, I have three of each going into the shop and I'm hoping I'm going to do a little bit more beading this afternoon once this is edited, uh, either saving, compressing, or uploading, because all of those take so much time. And yeah. So that is my Etsy update. Look out for that tomorrow. I will post about it on both Instagram, Instagram stories, hopefully. I tried to do Instagram stories last week, and it kind of froze and then crashed because my phone is old. 
Um, but yeah, Instagram, Instagram stories, Facebook. I'll post about it wherever I can. Twitter. We'll also go on Twitter. So now we're moving on to life things. So that's it with all the craftiness. Um, but yes, I suppose I should explain. These are slightly different. You won't be... Unless you know, you you might not notice, but they're slightly different in techniques. The coffee cups are made using a technique called bead weaving, uh, called brick stitch, sorry, and they fold. They do fold. They are flexible, but they only fold in like a particular way. You can't bend them the other way, and they don't twist that easily. Whereas square stitch, which is what Game Boys are made from. Super flexible, super durable, you can twist them, you can do whatever, they're not going to break. Because um, they're sewn together using super strong thread, using strong technique. So, I have never had uh, one of these break on me, just saying. The only, ooh, I'll put these, put them back in a little bag, this is a good thing about selling small things. And obviously they come to you nicely packaged. I don't just fling them in a bag for you. I had, did have some casualties with postage a couple of weeks ago, but I have redone my packaging to include a small amount of bubble wrap. So hopefully that will help. Let me know. Um, yeah, the only problems that I've had is my own fault is when I'm weaving in the ends of the things that I've made and the bead breaks um, and it's usually you know after I finish and I'm weaving it through one more bead before I snip the end off and the bead breaks but I'm thinking of selling them off as seconds because they're not falling apart I don't want to cut them apart and I just want I might just sell them on as I made a mistake here I have them for half price or something um, I'll think about it anyway life things my parents came to visit last week and uh, we had a lovely week they drove over last Monday, not the Monday just gone, the one before, and they stayed until the Monday just gone. So it meant that I was pretty busy for the whole week, entertaining the folks, uh, as you will. It snowed, it rained, it was warm, it was cold. My goodness, ridiculous. And the temperature today is pretty toasty. Well, I don't know, I've not been outside, but it's sunny and lovely, but they were here and it was raining and cloudy and gross, so. Um, we went to Rudersheim, which is a nice village along the Rhine. Uh, we went to Asmanshausen because I really wanted a picture next to the train sign because it's got a really funny name, also along the Rhine. And Rudersheim is the home of Asbach whiskey, brandy, whiskey, whiskey, Asbach, Asbach, good word. Um, we also went to Palmengarten and I bought a new friend for my cactus. Let me grab her real quick. So for those of you who don't know, last summer I went to Palmengarten and I bought Eddie. This is Edward. He is a Vatsen cactus. He has grown a little bit since I had him. I need to repot him but I'm going to wait till I move back um, because I don't want to have to buy a bag of dirt for two week, two months. Um, and then we have Susie. Now Susie is an Echeveria Perla von Nuremberg. It's a Großer Echeveria. Um, I looked it up and it just says it's a succulent. So it's Susie the succulent. I always called it Vera. But Susie the succulent works. She's quite pretty, she's kind of pinky. Um, if anyone has any tips on how to care for succulents, let me know. Also would like to repot her when I move back as well. Um, but like I say, that's not gonna happen for a couple of months. My cactus I've got down, you would just water it once every three weeks. Um, but everything I've looked up on succulents is just like drown it and then let it let the soil completely dry out and then drown it again. So I'm not entirely sure if there's like a set time period that you should water it or if it is just that. And then this past weekend um, we went to Köln aka Cologne uh, which is a really lovely city. Um, we went for a couple of days, we could have just gone for one day to be fair, 
But the day that we went was the day of the protest. They were protesting against the AF, AFD, AFD party, which is a new party in Germany, and they were meeting in Cologne to do their like big meeting. Um, and a lot of people are against them, which I'm not going to talk about political views right now because Britain is not in a good place. And yes, I've registered to vote. If anyone has any information on, uh, or has any links to websites on where to find reliable, trustworthy sources on what each of the British political parties are promising, let me know because I'm really struggling. Because one minute it's saying vote Tory, the next minute they're saying vote um, Labour and then the next minute saying don't vote for either of them, vote Lib Dem and oh, if in doubt vote Green and I never know who to vote for. I feel like I was more informed about the American election than I ever have been about British elections. Anyway, so there was this big protest going on which meant that like loads of the roads were closed and they said try to keep out of the city centre unless you have to go in. Um, and because loads of the roads were closed because it was this huge march um, with a crap ton of people there. It meant that we had to like walk up, do like a really long way round to everything. We went to a chocolate museum, so that was incredible. Um, what else did we do? We went in the cathedral. We saw the shrine to the three kings, which is pretty cool. I had the best schnitzel I've ever eaten, which is saying something. And yeah, we just had a really lovely time. Um, I had incredible cake and Zacher torte, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, it was nice. But because we walked around so much on the Saturday, on the Sunday, we were just kind of tired. Um, and then we got the train home at quarter to five. And then, yeah. Then my parents left Monday. Um, they had a bit of an eventful car journey home. A tire blew out in France, just outside of Paris, I think. Uh, which meant that my dad's car careered into a crash barrier. Everyone is fine, everyone is safe, the car is not fine. It is in a garage in France somewhere waiting to be shipped over. How annoying, because it's got boxes of our stuff in. <sighs> oh well, what can you do? You can't predict these things. Anyway, I thought this podcast was gonna be a short one and here's me rambling on for almost an hour. So that's a bit ridiculous. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button just below this video. Let me know that you enjoyed it. Helps to get my video out there a little bit. Also, if you do enjoy my videos, feel free to share them amongst your friends. Don't feel pressured to, obviously, because that would be super awkward. But um, feel free to share them if you have a friend that you think would enjoy this kind of video would mean a lot. Also, like I said in the introduction, feel free to hit subscribe. You get a new podcast every fortnight. You get a new video twice a week, hopefully. Um, can't make any promises, uh, but I will try really hard. And yeah. I think that's everything. Links to all of the podcast notes can be found in the Ravelry group, link is in the description box below to that. Also links to all of my social media can be found down below. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you very soon in my next video. Bye.